This week on C Plus News Time, Comedy Central lost one of its executives, and now the network is shifting the other big players around. And a judge is having trouble agreeing with Netflix's attempt to pick up bankrupt production studio Relativity's new movies. It's time to get serious and businessy only on this C Plus News Time. It's C Plus News Time with your host, Chad White. Welcome back to C Plus News Time. I'm your host, Chad White, and this is the comedy news that you didn't know about for the week of May 9th, 2016. I did some role playing last night. I was a sexy burglar, and the girl next door kept saying, Get out, I'm calling the cops. Guys, renewals and pilots are being ordered. The C Plus News Time Upfront Special is almost here. Is your body ready? I know mine is. First up, our first story is short and sweet. In preparation for their movie, Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping, The Lonely Island released a couple of singles for their tie-in music album that's releasing alongside the movie. Andy Samberg's character Connor For Real sings the tunes Mona Lisa, which tackles a famous painting, and I'm So Humble. That features Adam Levine. Next up, this week saw the exit of a top Comedy Central executive. Michelle Gainless has left the network after 12 years. Kent Alterman, her second in command and the president of original programming, will be taking her position. The move is taking place effective immediately as the end of Gainless's contract happens to be up in May, but she will stay on the board in an advisor position until September. Her role put her as the big player in the smooth transition from Jon Stewart to Trevor Noah and the not so smooth move from Stephen Colbert to Larry Woolmore. Those moves, along with the whole streaming thing, led to a decline in ratings. Parent company Viacom president Doug Herzog had some nice words to say about his ex-colleague. Quote, During Michelle's long and successful tenure, Comedy Central has grown into a cultural and multi-platform powerhouse. Her strong and strategic leadership have helped make this brand one of the most admired across the media. He then continued on to say how much of a nice person that she was and what the company will do moving forward. This is a strange year for Viacom, which already lost other execs at MTV and VH1. And speaking with the Hollywood Reporter, Herzog commented on the turnover of people in Viacom Network, saying, Viacom is one thing, but here at Comedy Central, we have had a fair amount of stability and longevity. We have a lot to do in terms of creating more, creating better, finding things that perform better on linear and are going to work on all platforms. I believe that if we keep doing what what we do well, a lot of these things are going to get figured out over time. We have to keep the brand vital, relevant, healthy. That's what we're going to do. A later discussion regarding how linear the industry can be led to Alterman mentioning that the millennial generation is, in fact, the leading edge in consuming media, which led to the decision for the network to join Snapchat. They did use the word content a lot throughout the last half of the conversation, which is not a word that I use to describe this shit that I do. And finally, if you're in what I like to call the biz, then you receive these emails about movie trailers, TV show cancellations, and the copious amount of trials involving companies and the people in the industry. One of the biggest court cases of the past few months has been the filing of Chapter 11 bankruptcy by Relativity Media, the umbrella corp that owns Relativity Studio. They've produced over 200 movies, made over $17 billion, and have garnered over 60 Oscar nominations. Now, dear streamers, a federal bankruptcy judge wants to keep the two of the studio's latest movies, and maybe last, off of Netflix. The Disappointments Room, a horror starring Kate Beckinsale, and Masterminds, a comedy starring Zach Galifianakis, Kristen Wiig, Owen Wilson, Jason Sudeikis, and a whole bunch more, are being fought over for distribution. Judge Michael Wiles is hesitant on Netflix's attempt to pick up two high-profile movies like these, citing that these movies were clearly made to be release in theaters first, not your laptop screens. Judge Wiles is taking his consideration via the agreement that Netflix and Relativity drew up in order for the streamer to put the studio's movies on the service. According to Variety, Netflix has always stood against what Relativity and the founder, Ryan Kavanaugh, have done with their Neil Blomkamp slash Peter Molyneux way of producing movies. It insinuated that the studio should release its movies online first because of their inability to deliver a finished product on time. But, like a rebelling teenager, Relativity insists on releasing both movies in the latter half of the year, hoping that they will turn things around. 
hoping. The situation turned into a real he said she said between the lawyers of the two companies with Netflix suggesting the case go to a federal arbitrator instead of Judge Wiles and Relativity taking asking for enough time to restructure the company. It's a sad moment in media history, but this is what happens when you have terrible movies come out one after another. The last few years releases didn't bode well for the company either. If you don't know Relativity's movies, then here are some of their biggest hits. Ride Along, Dumb and Dumber 2, The Lazarus Effect, Safe Haven, 21 and Over, and let's not forget the only success the company saw in the last few years are joint ventures with Universal's Fast and Furious 6 and 7. And that's all the news I have for you for this week on C Plus News Time. Why don't you subscribe and check out one of our videos? Of course, you can always head to the website cpluscomedy.com where we've got the latest news, reviews, features, interviews, and other good comedy bits that only I can provide you with. You can always follow us on Twitter at C Plus Comedy. Follow me on Twitter at Chad Black White. Like us on Facebook. Tumble with us on Tumblr. And don't use the word content to describe the shit that you do. It's just disrespectful and it just sounds like you make stuff and it's dumb. Just say you make stuff. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Bye.